everyone, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to show you how to make this super cute coffee cup pin cushion. It's the perfect thing for anyone who sews or crochets or knits or does any type of craft to keep track of their safety pins and their pins and needles. Now this is a free crochet pattern on my blog and you can find that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. So what you're going to need to make a little coffee cup pin cushion is two different colors of yarn. You'll need a cup color and a coffee color. I'm using this light brown and this bright yellow and these are Red Heart Super Saver yarns. You can also use cottons like peaches and cream. They work great too. I'm going to add this cute little button to mine. You can add a button if you want, or you could even add an applique. We're going to be stitching with our H hook today, which is a 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need just a small amount of stuffing to stuff inside. You'll need your scissors, and you'll also need that needle for weaving in your ends. We're going to begin with the bottom of the coffee cup and work our way up and then we'll make the coffee to put on the inside. We're going to begin with our slip knot and then we're going to chain four. We're going to place nine double crochets in the fourth chain from the hook. Our first three chains will count as our first double crochet. Yarn over, go in that fourth chain, and stitch a double crochet. Our chain three counted as our first, and we made one, so we need to make eight more for a total of ten. Alrighty. Make this one, let's see how many that we've made. Chain three is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We're going to join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. Now you may notice that my brown yarn stuck in my yellow. There we go. You may notice that you have a hole in the center. Don't worry about that. I'll show you how to fix that in a little bit. Now for row two, we're going to stitch one double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. And then we're going to stitch two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. And that will give us 20 double crochets. I've completed row two, stitching two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. I'm going to join to the top of my chain three with a slip stitch, and I'm just going to chain one. What we're going to do for row three is we're going to place one single crochet in each of the back loops of the double crochets. And if you'll notice, on the top of your stitches, you have a front loop that's facing you, and the back loop that's facing away. So we'll go right in that first loop and stitch a single crochet. And the single crochet is you go in the loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through both loops. And we'll put one single crochet in each of the back loops of the double crochets. We'll still have 20 stitches because we are not adding any more stitches. And what you'll begin to see is this line right here, and that's going to help our coffee cup cushion sit up like it should. So one single crochet in each of the back loops, working around till we get back to that first single crochet. 
I've completed that row and you should see that line going all the way around that's going to help our coffee cup sit up. We're going to join to the first single crochet, not the chain one, but the single crochet. We'll join with our slip stitch in chain one. And this is the only row where we were going to do the back loops. The rest of it is done in regular single crochet stitches. So we'll go right in that first stitch and we'll stitch one single crochet in each of the single crochets around. And again, we'll have 20 single crochets because we're not adding or subtracting any stitches. So one single crochet in each stitch around. I've completed that row of single crochets. I joined with a slip stitch and I chained one. And what we're going to do for the next three rows is just repeat this row. One single crochet in each single crochet around, join, chain one, and repeat. And we'll do this for three more rows. And this will get us up through row seven. I've completed up through row seven. And for row eight, we're going to repeat what we've been doing, stitching one single crochet in each of the single crochets around. And then when we get back around, we're going to add the little handle for our coffee cup. So I'll finish stitching around row eight, and then I'll show you how to do that coffee cup handle. All right, so we've stitched our last row, which is row eight, and we're going to chain seven. We're going to join this right down here. See where that loop is? We're going to go right above it in that stitch with a slip stitch. All right, so that's row three. So here's row one, row two, and we joined a row three with a slip stitch. We're going to chain one so that we can turn, and we're going to single crochet back up our handle. So we'll put one single crochet in each of, whoops, I missed it. There we go. And each of those seven chains. There's five six and my last chain, seven. And we're going to join right to that same stitch with a slip stitch and tie off. Whoops. There we go. All right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this way and I'm going to go in that stitch and I'm going to pull that string to the inside. and just give it a little tie down here. All right, so now our coffee cup is done as far as the coffee cup, but we have a few things that we need to attend to. First of all, we need to make sure this hole in the bottom is closed. So we're gonna turn it out. We're gonna thread that yarn where we started onto our needle. And we're gonna go around this center of those stitches there we go. And just make sure that that hole closes up. We'll just gather it up just like that. I like to go around again and then go back the other way I came, like back and forth, just to make sure that's not going to come undone. I just leave that in there because that's going to get stuffed. And then I'm going to take this end 
and just weave it down towards the bottom just to get it out of the way. All right, so there's the little coffee cup portion of our pin cushion. But now we need to make some coffee. To make the coffee, we're going to do the same that we did on rows one and two for the coffee cup. So we're going to make our slip knot. We're going to chain four. And then we're going to stitch nine double crochets in that fourth chain from the hook, just like we did at the beginning of our coffee cup. All right, let me see how many I made. Here's my chain three, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need to do one more. Join to my chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. And then again, we'll put two double crochets in each stitch. So we'll start with one double crochet and the same stitch as our chain three because our chain three counts is our first one and then we'll stitch two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. I stitched two double crochets in each of the double crochets around for 20 double crochets. We're going to join to the top of the chain three and then we're going to cut our yarn and tie off. Let's take a quick second to tidy it up. We're going to go to the back, make sure the hole in the center is closed. There we go. It's closed, so I'm going to go up and come back the other way. All right, and then we're going to take this end and just weave that back in under here so it's not in the way. And you can clip those tails if you want to. They are going to be on the inside, so it's not going to matter too much. All right, so let's assemble our pincushion. So we need some stuffing. And one thing that I have learned is if you have um, some buttons that you're not using and you want to put a little bit of weight down in here, you can add, you know, about five or ten buttons just to give it a little bit of weight to keep it from rolling around. I'm not doing that today. I'm going to put my stuffing in. And again, it's up to you how much you want to stuff it. I want to have it just enough where I can poke the pins in there and they're not going to go anywhere. Then we're going to take our circle of coffee and put it inside. And we're going to stitch around this edge to attach it. So how we're going to attach our coffee to the inside of our coffee cup is we'll put our hook through the loops on this and the loops on this. All right. Then we'll grab our yellow because we want this to look like the rim of our coffee cup. All right, so we're just going to make a little slip knot to get that in there. And then we'll go right in that same stitch and stitch a single crochet. And then we'll work our way around. We'll go through here and through here and stitch a single crochet. Easing it in so that it fits nicely. Now, if you stitch your cup correctly, you should have 20 stitches on the top of your cup and 20 stitches on your coffee circle. So everything should fit nicely. Now if you accidentally added or subtracted a stitch, you can always ease that in and make it fit if you have to. It's a pretty forgiving pattern. But if you work to have the 20 on your cup, and the 20 on your coffee, 
it should fit just nicely. And see how that sort of sinks in so you have an edge on your coffee cup? All right, now I'm going to keep working around the top of my coffee cup. There we go. Working around till everything fits. Alrighty. Now, when we get around to the handle, it can be a little bit tricky. So what you'll do is you'll go right in that stitch and you'll kind of just move around it. Make sure you get that last stitch in there and then we'll join to our first single crochet. Tie that off and we need to weave these ends in but that's the way it should look. There's your coffee and I like to make these with a little bit darker coffee just because I like dark coffee. But my granddaughter and I, we play house and we pretend they're cocoa. So that's a lot of fun too. All right, so I'm going to weave these ends in and then I'm going to show you how to add a little button so that it has a little bit of fun. So I'm going to weave those in and I'm going to go right in that stuffing and kind of swirl it around and pull it out. Then we'll just pull it back out. And that's just going to keep it where it needs to be. And we'll do that with this one as well. We'll go down in there. Just sort of swirl it around in some of that stuffing. Pull it through and clip it. And that's going to hold it on the inside. All right, so here's our little coffee cup. It's ready for some pins but we want to embellish it a little and you can add buttons, you can add appliques, you could even cross stitch some letters or something on there if you want to. I'm just going to add this cute little star and I'm just going to cut a piece of the yellow. And so what I do is I decide where I want my little star or button to be and this one's going to button sideways. So I'm going to take my yarn and kind of get grab some of that stuffing, leave a tail, and make a loop first. There we go. Then, because this isn't going to be buttoned through a buttonhole a bunch of times, it's just for decoration, I'm going to do a couple of stitches through it. And make sure you have a needle that fits your button. If you're doing a button with smaller buttonholes, you may need to get a smaller needle. All right, so I do that a few times. Then I take the two ends and just tie it tight. Like I said, since I'm not going to be buttoning this through a buttonhole, it's just for decoration. I'll do those three knots. You know, I always like to do three. We'll push it forward and clip those strings. So there is the yellow pin cushion. Whoopsie! <laughs> There's the pink one. And like I said, you can put some buttons that you have left over or anything that you want down in the bottom if you're worried about it falling over. I think this would be a wonderful gift to add to uh, someone who you're putting together maybe a gift of sewing supplies, knitting supplies, or crochet supplies, or any crafter who's going to use pins and needles. Aren't these adorable? And also, like I said, my granddaughter and I use them for playtime around the play kitchen.